Hello, I'm Bill Olson. Kyoko Mori learned to enjoy writing at a young age thanks to her grandparents. Though she was born and raised in Japan, she's done most of her writing in English. Mori has published fiction, nonfiction, and poetry, and is a Briggs Copeland lecturer in creative writing at Harvard University. I talked with her in the year 2000 in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. How old were you when you realized that writing is what you really wanted to do? Um, you know, I don't think until you're, you're in high school you really envision your future in any kind of a concrete way. So maybe when I was a senior in high school and when I was in college, I mean, I started thinking that, you know, I wanted to write in some way that is more than a hobby. Tell me about how your mom and grandfather influenced your uh, interest in writing. Um, you know, they were both both uh, writers, I mean, not professionally so, but uh, my grandfather kept a journal and he wrote every day. He was also a school teacher, so writing was something that he taught. Um, he didn't, you know, he wasn't a published novelist or anything, but writing was a discipline with him and something that he valued very much. My mother um, wrote, you know, every week she would write to her parents and write these long letters and it was something that she valued. The, the person in my family who published actually was my grandmother, my, my maternal grandmother. She used to write haiku and, um, you know, the, the, the newspapers in Japan always had, um, like every month they would publish I, publish, I don't know, 30 haiku or whatever. And she would often get published in, you know, that sort of a way. I mean, she would get her poems published in newspapers. I mean, it wasn't like a great writing career, but she certainly was a writer in that way. Yeah, it's nice to be able to see yourself in print. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, it must have been nice for you to, to see that your grandmother was mm -hmm. published. Like mm -hmm. that. Definitely. I mean, so, it, you know, it wasn't anything unusual for me to think of writing. I mean, some people don't really see writing practiced except at school. You know, but I certainly saw a lot of writing being practiced at home. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was kind of curious. Do you still have your father's or your grandfather's journal? Or, or I do, you? yeah. I mean, I read them now and then. I haven't really done anything with them. You know, but just to see the texture of life there. You know, when he, I mean, he would talk about the weather. He would talk about what was on TV. You know, the things that my cousins or my uncles or aunts have had said. Yeah, it was nice. It's, it's nice to have that. Mm. How did uh, your proficiency in English open doors for you, if it did? I, um, you know, I've always spoken English, so it's never been a real big deal. Um, but when it turned out that I wasn't going to write in Japanese, it was very, you know, good to have another <laughs> language. How come you decided not to do writing in Japanese? You know, writing in Japanese is really hard. I mean, it's never been, I mean, I did well enough, but I don't know, you know, it, it's, it's like this. In Japan, you're never trained to be a writer. I mean, the people who become writers become writers on their own. I mean, there isn't like a graduate program in creative writing. They don't really teach creative writing in, you know, schools. So I think if your parents are famous writers or journalists and you have that kind of access, it's probably easier to become a writer in Japanese than not. Even though people in my family wrote regularly, they were not professional writers, so I wouldn't have had the connections or the opportunity. And I really am not into this idea that people can just teach themselves. I mean, that may be true for some people. But everything I know how to do, I have had to, you know, learn in some formal way. You know, I, I run, but I was on a track team in high school, so it wasn't something I even taught myself. Um, you know, I'm a weaver, I took a class, I mean, how, why should writing be any different? Um, I don't see how I would have learned to write in Japanese, though, because there are no classes. So, since English is from a different um, cultural tradition, that, that writing about uh, Japan or, or your Japanese background in mm -hmm. English kind of misses something of the tradition or heritage of, ja of Japan? No, not, not really. I mean, so much of you know, so much of any writing in any language is about a place that the language is not, you know, not from. You know, people uh, write about other, I mean, a lot of Americans write about Europe, you know, for instance. And I don't think that if that, that misses much of anything. You would say then that a writer who wants to write about a, another place shouldn't worry about 
what language they write in as long as they're a good writer in that language. Yeah, and also I think it probably helps to be able to speak that language that's spoken in that other place so that your experience in that place is, you know, fairly full. Because if you go to a place where you don't speak the language, your experience in that place can only be, you know, I, I mean, it can be limited by the fact that you don't really have conversations there except with yourself. So I think it helps to know the other language. But I don't think you, you like if you were an American writer, you know, wanting to write about Germany, you know, you probably should be able to speak German. So when you go there, you can have a fairly full life. But I don't think you have to be able to write in German to write about Germany. What helped you become a good writer? I guess going to school, you know, and uh, attending these workshops. Um, I mean, they were really pretty uh, necessary, I think. Um, you know, just have my peers and also my professors really look at my writing and just really pay attention, you know, to the things that I've done. I mean, every paragraph, every sentence, so on and so forth. Also, reading literature really helped. But there again, going to school really helped because there were people to direct me to, you know, what is available, you know, for me to read. I mean, if I just went to the bookstore when I was a uh, senior in high school and looked at the fiction stacks, I really wouldn't have necessarily known what to read that would be really helpful to me. So how much of good writing would you say is talent from in within and how much of it is skill? Uh, like a craft that can be developed? Well, I think it's both. You know, now that I teach, I realize that there is a huge gap between the talent of a person who can really write right off the bat and, you know, the talent of people who struggle. Um, you know, I, I, I really don't, I used to think that anyone could learn to be a writer, but I don't think this anymore. I mean, after years of teaching, I have to say that anyone can get much, much better than, you know, where he or she is at right now in their, you know, in, in his or her writing, uh, his or her writing ability. I don't think that just anyone is going to be a great writer, but anyone can get better. I mean, that's so much, tr you know, that's so true. You know, like anyone can learn how to write concisely and mm -hmm. not use repetitions mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. But as far as a really great metaphor, some mm -hmm. people might not have a knack for it. Yeah, yeah, or, or, or an eye for detail, you know, or, or the sensitivity to language. I mean, I, I, I do think that there's some talent involved there, but I, on the other hand, I don't think somebody who has a lot of talent who never, you know, tries or, or um, you know, revises. I mean, I, I don't think someone like that could write a really great novel either. Right. Writers are, are often told, write what you know. Um, is it possible to do good writing while not writing what you know? No, I don't think so. I, I think, however, that people should write what they know but don't understand. You know, this is why so many people write about their family. Mm. I mean, these are people you know but don't really understand. And, you know, the more you know them, the less you understand them sometimes. I mean, I think there has to be that, that gap between what you know and what you understand for there to be interesting writing. You know, if you know something and you think you've already figured it all out, I mean, I think your writing tends to be a little flat. So the act of writing is kind of like chronicling um, or documenting your process of coming to understand something. Or, or yeah, or be. even even creating a sort of a venue in which you can you can try to understand something that, you know, of course you will never completely understand. As opposed to saying, well, I see this and that's what's there. Mm -hmm. um, some of the most interesting writing can be, I'm finding this and, mm -hmm. and I'm finding my feelings about this and, and, and and here's what I'm learning that I didn't know um, an hour ago, maybe. Yeah, de definitely. What's the best part about being a writer for you? I don't know. I like being in the middle of something, you know, where, um, you know, it's a project that I've been doing for a while and I, I've sort of figured out where it's going, but not completely. Um, you know, so I've written something and I, I think there's something in it, but I need to revise it and I'm beginning to find out you know, what it's all about. I mean, that, that, that's a good part. 
kind of the act of discovery of the work you're doing. Or even, you know, uh, the act of making better sentences. Right. Uh, what's your favorite of your works and why? I don't know. I mean, it, that's hard to say. I think the thing that you're working on is probably always your favorite thing, or the f thing you just most recently finished. So I think f right now it, it would be my novel that just came out. And what's that novel called? It's called Stonefield, True Arrow, and it's a novel about a woman who lives in Milwaukee and is a weaver. But, you know, it's very much about solitude and being an artist and a sort of pursuit of beauty. So that's a theme. I, I suppose so. Of course, I didn't know this until I, you know, was halfway through the book. Uh, what was your impetus to write it? Um, the hours I spent looking at this comet a few years ago, Hale Bob. Yeah, I saw that. It was a good It was one. beautiful, and you could see it even if you lived in an urban area because it was so bright and it came out at just the right time. So, you know, I spent a lot of time looking at it, and I started thinking about, you know, all the time you have to spend alone to look at something beautiful. And I also imagined, you know, somebody looking at this comet and being in the middle of her life and thinking, I will never see this again. What are you, what's your favorite work by someone else or uh, your favorite author or one of them? I really don't have like any one favorite author. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there are people I like to read. I mean, with, with this too, it's just like, you know, you're writing. The thing that you just finished reading that you liked is probably the one that's foremost in your mind. I just finished uh, Sue Miller's novel while, while I was gone. I mean, that was really well done. It was a first-person narrative. And it just catches these moments, you know, psychological moments of truth about, you know, what it's like to be married, uh, what it's like to uh, remember something from your past, and, you know, that's not the life you have anymore, and now you're leading a different life, and what do you do about that? I mean, that, that was very well done. I mean, I really enjoyed that novel. What would you like to read that maybe you haven't had time to yet? Something that's on your list to, um, or, or an author, or some, someone you want to explore? Um, you know, I, I, I have like stacks of books on my shelf that I hope to read yet. So I haven't quite thought of any one thing except that I really should get to, you know, all of that. Once in a while, you know, I go back and try to bridge the gap in my education you know, there are these uh, sort of masterpieces of literature that I have somehow not read. Um, you know, I have to say I've never been I've read through War and Peace. I mean, that would be a good thing to read, um, but it's easier to f start with something smaller. Um, this, this summer I read Madame Bovary for the first time. You know, it's a book that everyone should have read, but I just never, you know, read it. So I thought, you know, every summer I, I want to read something like that, some important you know, work that I've somehow skipped over in my, you know, in my reading career. Mm -hmm. I'd like to go back and, you know, fill that gap as much as possible. Well, thank you. And thank you for your time. All right, thank you. I really enjoyed talking with you. Okay.